happy holiday girl. Who says you have to wait until certain times of the year to get to celebrate? When every day's a holiday, we can combat stress and have more opportunities to have fun with our friends and family. Come celebrate with me and together we can live a holiday life. What's good, holiday lifers? It's your girl, Gabby, and today is National Cuddle Day, a day completely dedicated toward tending to our most natural desire for physical touch. Whether that be cuddling with loved ones or our pets, physical touch is essential for all people everywhere and is a necessary aspect of being a well-rounded human being. But what happens if physical touch were to disappear? Tune in to today's podcast as we delve in a bit deeper into the human need for physical touch, and we give suggestions on how we can get more of that in our lives today. Stay tuned. For starters, you know I like to begin our podcast with our quote of the day. So here's today's quote. The human touch is that little snippet of physical affection that brings a bit of comfort, support, and kindness. It doesn't take much from the one who gives it, but can make a huge difference in the one who receives it. And that was by Maya Roberts, The V Girl, A Coming of Age Story. I love that quote because it's so true. How many times have you maybe been caught up in something and someone comes up from behind you and touches you and it takes your attention away from whatever it was that you were doing in that moment and kind of offers you a fun little surprise? I love moments like that because it's that little surprise that at first it can be kind of scary, but then after you get over the chuckle or the laugh, it really just brings a little bit of joy to your life. And it's funny how it's something that as small as just touching somebody on the shoulder that can offer even a tiny break from whatever it was that they were focusing on. And just for a moment, give them a little bit of a surprise and, and a pleasant smile. And that was all offered whenever you touched the person. It wasn't necessarily your voice that brought the surprise, but the physical touch. And whenever we're down, it's those hugs that come from a loved one that really, um, that really matter the most. You can cry out your eyes to someone else. And if the person is physically apart from you and listening to your story, it helps to get the words out. But whenever that person across the room reaches out to give you a hug and comfort, it's the hug that, that makes you feel like you're not alone. Sometimes words just aren't enough. Words aren't able to convey the level of compassion that's needed. And sometimes when there are no words that can be said, it's the physical action of a hug or a cuddle or a simple touch that makes all the difference. And so I really enjoyed that quote. And uh, hopefully if you come across someone that's down today, you can take the opportunity in a safe way to give them a hug. But what really is surprising to me, and I, I know that Corona is one of the causes of this, but even before Corona, I found this article on greatergood.berkeley.edu and it was published, let me see if I can find the date. It was published in 2018, so before the coronavirus even started. And it poses the topic and question, physical contact seems to be declining in modern life, but what happens when we lack human touch? Now, that's something so weird, I guess, of a concept to think about. I, because I'm around my kids all day long, I'm constantly, uh, I try to give hugs or I feel like I'm always surrounded by little people <laughs> and my husband and my dog on a regular basis. But I, I guess I never really stopped to think about how many times we actually touch each other throughout the day. I know that we talk to each other. I know that we are around each other, but... I have never stopped to really appreciate and acknowledge the amount of physical touch we come in contact with on a daily basis. And I make sure to say every day, I love you to my children, especially before they go to bed and to give them their goodnight kisses. But to think that I know whenever they were little, you know, you hold them, you feed them, you know, you constantly are cuddling. But as you get older, that physical touch, there become more boundaries between people and especially in America. In America, we really value our personal space. It's actually crazy because before Corona and everything like that, I had traveled to France with my mother whenever I was younger. And one of the major differences between that culture in France and the United States is whenever you go to the restaurants there, people sit very closely with one another. Now I would 
maybe imagine one argument would be that it's an older country. And so potentially because it's older, people are a bit more crowded, I, I imagine. But it still makes me wonder, people are much more comfortable being close with one another. Whereas in American culture, we have our own personal bubbles. We don't get that close to each other. If you're sitting and eating a meal, another person's not going to be sitting and eating a meal literally two, three feet away from you. But in France, people are packed into, at least in the restaurant that I went to, maybe it's not like this everywhere, but people were packed into the dining places and it was much more intimate. You had the ability to really converse with somebody who's sitting next to you if you want to, or you could eat your meal in peace, but it's a stark contrast with our culture. And so finding this article on the Berkeley website was very interesting to me. The article interviews Tiffany Field. She is the head of the Touch Research Institute at the University of Miami's Miller School of Medicine. She says in the article, I think social media has been readily detrimental to touch. Being on your phone is distancing people physically from each other. It used to be in airports, you'd see people hugging and napping on each other. Now they're just not touching. It's disturbing to think that this is something that's going on that people are becoming much more distant. And my main concern is after the vaccinations, everything with Corona has subsided, I wonder how will our society, how will we rebuild? Will people be that much more hesitant even than they were before to be physical in contact with one another? It's, it's kind of a scary world to think of that we could become so separated that that could become the new norm. And hopefully that's not so. But in order to highlight more of the importance of cuddling, I thought I'd give a phone call to a licensed professional counselor to offer a bit more insight into today. Chude Manello is a licensed professional counselor. And guys, just so you know, LPCs are master's degree mental health service providers who are trained to work with individuals, families, and groups in treating mental behavior and emotional problems and disorders. So I am extremely excited to have the opportunity to speak with him because I know he is qualified in talking about physical touch and the emotional impact that that has in our lives. So without further delay, here is my special guest, Chude Munalo. Chude, how are you doing today? Doing good, doing good. Thank you for having me. I was reading an interesting article on the berkeley.edu website that said that physical touch is more or less in the decline these days. And this article was written in 2018 before the coronavirus pandemic started. After learning that physical touch is more on the decline in our society due to social media, what are some suggestions and tips and, and your thoughts about physical touch and what we can do to encourage more of that in our lives today? Well, um, it's important that we have contact. It's important that our bodies be in rhythm with other bodies. Um, if I guess that you're single, hopefully you have a pet or um, a friend if you want to get together and cuddle. Uh, cuddling's not bad. Uh, we all... We all need it. We all need skin-to-skin -skin contact. Uh, it's the way we form attachments in our early life. I was reading an article that said that when people cuddle with their pets, oxytocin is actually released not only in the pet's body, but also in the human's body. Do you think that there's truth to that? Do you think that people can benefit as much from cuddling with our pets? Or do you think that it's strictly a person-to-person -person thing? I do, I do think so. I think people definitely benefit. I think our, our pets have natural healing abilities. I think we've all had, um, hopefully, we've all had a, a dog or a cat that knows when we're sad and comes over to us and licks us, gives us the attention we need just at the right time. How important do you think physical touch is in our life? Right now, you know, we're being so isolated with, uh, with corona. So what does physical touch, does it really have that big of an impact? Is it not okay for just for us just to call people on the phone? Is that not enough? I know. I, I think when we can't touch, I definitely think it's good for us to connect, make eye contact, stay social. Of course, we want to stay safe, um, but it is important for us to touch. It's important for us, you know, to make contact. There was a guy by the name of Harry Harlow who did research. Uh, I can't remember exactly what time, but you know, I'd have to refer to the research, but. Over 100 years ago, he did research in the, in the field. It was well-known in the counseling field. And what he did was he took uh, baby monkeys and separated them from the mother. 
And he basically had a fox mother that was like warm to the touch and a barbed wire mother who um, wasn't warm to the touch. And I think like a barbed wire mother who had food. And so, you know, sometimes we as parents think that it's all about what we have in our hands to give our kids. But in this research, the baby, the, the baby monkey, um, unanimously preferred the cloth mother. And this is, this basically proves the importance and the need for touch. And then you have John Bowlby who talks about um, how attachments form in the first two and a half years of life. Um, and what we believe in the field today that a lot of this has to do with touch and how kids love. And this is so important because um, it's been shown in research that you form your attachment, babies form their attachment early in life, and this, they take this attachment with them throughout the rest of life. So why this is so important is if a baby forms a poor attachment with mom because of lack of touch or because of lack of being cared for, they tend to have this attachment in their older relationships, including in their adult relationships, including with their babies, which means they reproduce that cycle. So as much as possible, uh, especially when kids are infants, we see parents want to put kids down a lot, but it's important for that skin-to-skin contact at birth, and it's important for um, babies to have touch to form a healthy attachment so that they can form safe, uh, healthy adult relationships. Well, thank you today so much for your time. I will definitely make sure to give my kids a hug today. Uh, I I try to hug them every day, honestly, guys. But still, it's National Cuddle Day, so I'll make sure we all get in the bed and and cuddle a bit more today. Maybe uh, watch a good cartoon. They like PJ Masks, and uh, maybe we can all have a big cuddle fest. (laughs) What about you, Chude? Do you think you're down for the cuddle today? You're going to find a a pet or something, a a friend uh, to give a big hug to? (laughs) I I'll probably I I'll probably find a reach out to a friend. Gives get the give me good that gives me a good reason, a good excuse to get my cuddle on. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. It is hashtag national cuddle day. So thanks so much today for your time and uh I'll talk to you later. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank 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 you very much, Gabby. And now it's time for our fun fact of the day. Take the time to dedicate your day to giving someone a hug. It could be your spouse, your child, your dog, just take the time to be conscious about it and give a hug. It'll make yourself feel better and release tons of oxytocin hormones in the person who receives the hug as well. So what do you think? After learning about hugs today, do you think you're willing to dish out a couple more to your loved ones today? (laughs) Head on over to aholidaylife.com now for more holiday fun. There you can sign up to receive a free monthly calendar full of fun holiday activities for every day. You can also leave me a voicemail of what you're doing to celebrate the holiday. You might be on my next episode. Also, if you like my podcast, please be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast from. You can follow me on social media by using at A Holiday Life on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest, and at A Holiday Life Podcast on Instagram. And for more holiday fun, head on over to my sister podcast, Holiday Trivia, to give my trivia questions a shot. If you get three or more out of five questions correct, you're well on your way to becoming a holiday lifer. Until next time, keep celebrating the holidays, stay safe, and live a holiday life. I'll talk to you tomorrow.